So welcome to this week's Optimal Health Clinic Facebook Live. And this week, uh, well, firstly, you might see that I've upgraded the, uh, the setup. There's been uh, <laughs> multiple complaints around camera kind of moving around. Um, so I managed to get a system which holds the camera, but also plugging in a microphone. So hopefully uh, it's going to be significantly better. Although I realized that um, I have a style on my eye and it's suddenly much more visible by having a better setup. But anyway, hopefully um, it will um, Hopefully it will be better and let me know if you prefer them done uh, in this format. So this week, I wanted to talk about the power of giving up. Um, this is obviously an odd one and you might read the title and think, well, is there ever any, any value or what is the power of giving up? The reality is when you are on a long journey or path towards changing something, it is inevitable that there are going to be times along that path which you are going to feel like you can't keep going. You're going to feel like um, it's too much. You're going to feel like you don't have what it takes. And one of the famous quotes is, running a marathon, it doesn't matter how many times you quit as long as you keep putting one foot in front of the other. I think this also has a particularly interesting uh, relevance in terms of the, the recovery path from um, MECFS. Now, I'm obviously making a clear distinction here between the value of giving up for a day or a few days or you know, maybe even a week of just saying, it's too much, I can't do it, I don't know what, what to do, what the way forward is. Making a distinction between that and just giving up and having no sense of a plan going forwards. So I'm more specifically talking here to when we have a plan, we're following that plan, overall that plan is working, that plan, um, it, you know, it's making a difference. And if it's not, I would strongly encourage you to check out other videos that I've done, um, look at working with a practitioner at OHC. I, I am actually making an assumption here that we are already on, um, on the right track. But when we're on the right track, there is inevitability that there will be times where you do too much too soon, where you're bouncing the boundaries and you bounce a little bit too hard and you have a mini crash. There'll be times where there's something that you have to do, you don't really have a choice about doing it or you have a little choice about doing it and you do it and it's too much and you feel rubbish on the other side. And we can feel like in these, these moments that regardless, we just have to keep powering on through, that we just have to kind of, you know, if we've got our commitments in terms of, um, you know, the tools that we're using are kind of how we're eating, all those things that we just have to keep on pushing. And obviously, the path to recovery is not a path driven by the achiever pattern. And sometimes the best thing you can do is for a, for a window of time, absolutely leave yourself alone. And that doesn't mean stopping doing the things that fundamentally are important and are helping you. So it doesn't mean stopping taking supplements and, you know, ordering Burger King, whatever it may be. Um, equally, it might mean that you give yourself a little bit of a break. It might mean that, you know, if you're following a nutrition program, there's a kind of 80-20 kind of principle to it, that you perhaps eat some things that are a bit more comforting. Perhaps you, um, for a few days, you stop doing the tools and techniques you're using. Recognize the importance you need to restart doing those things. But for that period of time, you just leave yourself alone. And, and something interesting happens when we do this. Firstly, it can have a very powerful impact on our nervous system. It's like if there's a kind of rigidity and attention and, and a kind of doing this in trying to get better. And we give ourselves permission to just kind of back off and leave ourselves alone. It's like the whole system can kind of settle and calm and relax. And sometimes people's biggest insights come when they, for us, in a sense, give up and, and stop fighting. In the context of um, non-ME CFS, I know, for example, if, if I've got a particularly complex problem that I'm trying to solve, perhaps there's something in, in my work life or in my personal life that... I don't know what to do. and I feel overwhelmed by the complexity or the amount of moving pieces. One of the best things for me is to go and lie in a, in a steam room or a jacuzzi or a sauna and just space out and just not think about that thing and then let it kind of percolate and let it kind of brew in, in, in the background. So 
sometimes we need to give ourselves that permission to stop pushing and stop and stop fighting. And ultimately, we shouldn't be pushing and fighting to recovery anyway. But inevitably, what comes in is certain standards and pressures that we need to do it a certain way. And that is important, ultimately. You know, the path to recovery is not, you don't push yourself to recovery, but you also don't do nothing to get to recovery. You have to be actively engaged in the process. But one of these is also interesting here is that memory is state dependent. So for example, when we are um, happy and excited, we tend to remember the things in our life that we're happy and excited about. If we're feeling anxious, we tend to remember all the things in our life that we're anxious and worried about. And it's like this amazing ability to start to remember all these things that in our life that we have um, concern about. If we're in love, we start to feel love towards people and circumstances that probably we weren't feeling love towards before. So sometimes when we're in a place where we feel like we want to just kind of for a window of time give up and leave ourselves alone. It's almost like in the process of doing that, we shift the state that we're in. And as a result of shifting that kind of feeling like we have to do the recovery path, we have to, if we don't do all these things we've committed to doing, then recovery is not going to happen. Almost in, in, by definition of going to a counter position and going, I don't know what to do. I can't do this. It's too much. A bit like being on the marathon and, you know, that person keeps running, keep putting one foot in front of the other. But in their mind thinking, you know, I'm, I'm just going to check out when I get to the next um, water stop or... Um, that it allows us to access ideas, information, thoughts that otherwise we might not get to anyway. We start to see the importance of changing gears. In fact, um, I remember with uh, one patient that I took on um, a while ago that they were doing everything super diligently. Like they really had it all down in terms of pacing and techniques and all of that stuff. And ends up using an analogy that it's like playing around of playing golf. And one of the things interesting with sports is that how you, like in golf, the golf club or tennis, a tennis racket, how you hold it is really important. And sometimes just a very subtle loosening in the grip. If you're holding too tight, then that can be unhelpful in terms of, in terms of the swing. And that subtle loosening of the grip can have a really, really big difference. Same in, in, in tennis, that if you're holding the racket too tightly, you just need to soften the grip. And that subtle one or two percent difference can make a huge difference in terms of how everything else comes together. So when I talk about the power of giving up, one of the things that I'm kind of referring to is that this loosening of pressure and grip can be a really helpful way in settling the system, but also giving ourselves access to information, to ideas, to thought processes that we wouldn't normally get because memory is state dependent. We're in a certain memory pattern. So we're just remembering all the things that support the current position that we are in. To be clear, I'm not advocating quitting. I'm not advocating giving up indefinitely. If you feel like you, that this is, you get stuck in this place, you need help to get out of it. You need a clear plan that you're following. Referring to when you have a plan, you're following a plan, the plan's kind of working but you just have these periods where you just kind of need to leave yourself alone. And I wanted to speak to the value of that um, and not seeing that as failure. Often our inner critic will come in and it will have all kinds of ideas saying, we failed, we're doing it wrong. You know, the fact you're having these thoughts is going to jeopardize your recovery. And I want to challenge that and actually see we're human. We have a part of us that just needs to chill out, to relax. That's why... People, you know, in, in kind of normal society, um, we have a seven day week, generally five days at work. And, you know, historically, a day of activity at the weekend and a day of rest, um, gratitude, you know, perhaps religion at the weekend. And that's necessary to sustain. If recovery is something we're doing, seven days a week, every minute we're awake, that softening of that can be extremely helpful um, and can have surprising impact. So I hope that's been useful. Um, feel free to share your experiences around this. It'd be interesting to see. I, I imagine this is something that, that you guys have already experienced, that almost accidentally you've had times that you've just gone, tonight or this weekend, I leave myself alone. I give up. I'm still going to put one foot in front of the other. Things that I know are crucial to my recovery, I'm still going to keep doing them. Other things that are helping, perhaps I'm going to give myself a few days off. 
And then really the trick is being able to get started again. And, you know, in fact, we were just doing the, the, the final session last week for the current Conscious Transformation Program. And one of the things I was saying there about meditation practice is the importance of it's not being able to, it's the, the key is not being able to be disciplined to practice every single day. The key is if you miss a few days, getting yourself back to the practice and having the discipline and the self-awareness, the things that get in the way that stop you from doing that. Um, so getting started again is hugely important. Um, often by giving yourself, letting yourself give up, taking the time, taking the rest, it means you're in a far more um, resourceful place to get back to doing what you need to be doing. So I hope that's been useful. Um, we, I should be doing same time uh, next week and then the week after, Nikki uh, Wigner, one of the psychology team, is doing an um, uh, interview uh, with um, one of her patients, which I think will be uh, interesting. We've got some really cool ideas of things we're going to start playing with. Um, we're also looking at doing a podcast. Um, so those of you that, that perhaps listen to podcasts, let us know if that's something that, that, that you would be interested in us doing. Um, and I will talk to you next week. Bye-bye for now.